Hey guys, welcome to the next Critique the Community. We're gonna be doing a photo contest with your travel photos. We're gonna be giving away awesome prizes today, a Tamron lens, the 28 to 75, the Spider X2 Elite uh, color calibrator to calibrate your monitor with your printer and multiple screens all at the same time. We're also giving away a tutorial from the F-Stopper store. Later on in this uh, critique, I'll tell you about the next one that's gonna be starting right now, but let's go ahead and get to this one. Here is the first image. Man, this is pretty incredible. It's so sad that the second I see this, I'm like, is this real? This is fake, right? <laughs> this is AI, right? This this can't be real. You have to zoom in on all the hands and stuff to make sure that they all have the right number of fingers and the, the, <laughs> the water drops are blurred. Yeah. You've taken photos before where you dip the camera down and you get the above and it's under. It's so hard to do. you think it would be easy. It's, well, a lot of so times, hard. like I was just in our pool here trying to get pictures of my son using a bag and you really need something away from the lens so that it has that separation. Otherwise, you just get all this blur and water and it mm -hmm. doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious what camera they used and did it have space between like, imagine an aquarium or a terranium or something that you then put the lens in. I wonder if there was some space in there to allow this nice visual above the lens and below, mm -hmm. you know? Cause if mm -hmm. you think it's a small lens, yeah, if it was like your cell phone, it could never do this. Right, the water line is as big as the lens itself. Yeah. But you, what I guess what I was going to say was um, you never really know how close the things are underwater because it distorts because of diffraction. This looks like this whale is hitting and knocking the boat over, but the people look so calm and peaceful. You sure. Know? I wonder, you know, the depth of the two subject matters, what the difference is there. I get the feeling like this whale is very close to the camera and the boat, you know, is like, 20, 30 feet away, but uh, <laughs> they're smiling wrong. at the person holding the camera and the guy holding the camera is like, you're about to be destroyed. <laughs> you don't even know. Well, you know, I just noticed, I thought that was a mountain on the right side, but I actually think that's the nose of oh, the yeah, whale breaching out so they can see it. Yeah. And then I guess there's multiple boats, you know, where's yeah. the camera? Is he a diver or is he on the side of the boat putting a camera down? Does he tell us any of this? Let's see. He, he just gave us a little a little uh, science lesson about where they migrate and blah, 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 blah. But he did not give us any information on oh, how no. he shot it or what camera or what gear. Although his profile picture, he's he looks like a free diver. Oh, so okay. maybe he is actually in the water with this thing. That's wild. This was taken by Samuel Resendiz. All right, are you ready to rate this? Travel is going to be difficult because we always like to put images in a certain portfolio and these are all going to be, you know, kind of all over the place. So maybe this is like a, you're a travel photographer and you're trying to get a portfolio for National Geographic or for any publication, you know, news agencies, travel and leisure, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it's so tough because this image in terms of photography is not that mind blowing, but in terms of nature and what he captured, it's yeah. so awesome. Like without the boat in the background, this image kind of sucks, you know? It's oh yeah, not without the boat, in, I don't, at all. yeah. Um, but with the boat and the whale, it's just so wild to see it, them so close to each other. So yeah, I'm really struggling to rate this. On one hand, it's mind blowing. On the other hand, it's not that good of an image. <laughs> so. I mean, rate it as you will. Three, two, one. I'm gonna go four. Okay. I don't okay. know. Okay. I'm in between a three and a four. I mean. I, I agree with you. Like, um, I think 3.5 is the correct number here. I think this is a really solid, cool image. There is a part of me that wants to just post process the bottom half of the image a little bit more. Like maybe make it a little contrastier pull the blacks down, maybe even dodge and burn. I don't, like with some of these travel images, and especially when you get into photojournalism, there's definitely like a code of ethics of how far you can go with certain tools. And we just mentioned how much you can do in Lightroom now, right? Yeah. Lightroom used to be, if you could do it in Lightroom, it was okay. But if you had to pull it into mm -hmm. Photoshop and start tweaking the pixels, cheating. now you've cheated. Um, but now with Lightroom doing as much as it is, could you just put a gradient on the bottom and start really tweaking it to where that pops a little bit more? So, that yes. Might, that might put it to a four for me if, if you could do just a, like I also don't like the highlight of the nose is kind of. Blown out. I want a little bit of detail and make it like gray and <clears throat> mm -hmm. tweak it to where it fits. I also don't like the color on the whale. I, I feel like this image is very 
real and just straight out of camera, which yep. is great. But I feel like you could pull the the green tent towards the magenta side just the slightest bit, and it would bring back that nice, clean, clear blue look. Um, but right now, it obviously, it just has that natural uh, green tone, which normally you would fix with you know a, a white balance or a tent shift. But you can't do that without messing up the white balance outside of the water, right on the top of the frame. Yeah. So you need you need to cut the image in half and white balance them each individually, but it's still such an amazing shot. Love it. Yeah. Next up. Whoa. This is one of those visual overloads. Like you have to stop and really, I mean, you obviously know what you're looking at, but <laughs> your eye kind of goes everywhere. <laughs> this has got to be, is it Myanmar? Where's the location where this happens? I always thought it was Turkey. Turkey. I mean, that sounds right and too. it does say Cappadocia, Turkey. Gosh. Flying in these balloons seems like the most horrifying <laughs> experience ever. Where were we recently where we saw a hot air balloon? Was it Mike's wedding or something? I don't know. We saw a hot air balloon somewhere and the conversation turned into how do they guide it where they're going? Yeah, and they don't. You don't, but when you have this many. I know, they look like the ones on the left side look like they're hitting each other. And they're over these spires. It just looks like if something <laughs> malfunctions and your balloon starts going down and you just fall into some canyon. You're in the worst possible place. I know, it's so crazy. After this critique, I'm gonna have to look at hot air balloon collisions because do these just bounce off each I other like, like nothing or could it collapse? You've seen like the- I don't think it can collapse. Oh my he God, he's down. hanging. He went down. Did he fall? No, he didn't. Oh, oh Jesus. He's gonna blow up. Please, please, please. He's hanging off the Oh, oh my God, oh. My God. oh. I hope he's not the one who runs it. You've seen the base jumpers and stuff when their parachute like yeah. hits the edge or something and yeah. it's total catastrophe. Yeah. These are a little bit more stable, I hope. You know, maybe the pressure difference between inside the balloon and outside with the heat allows them to just, but I mean, gosh, I don't want to be in a balloon when it touches another one. This was taken by Pedro Pulido. He said it was a simple edit, a bit of pushing the colors, uh, scenario was absolutely insane, and there are so many balloons. There was a mix of constant awe from what I was looking at, as well as fear. How do they steer these things? How do they not crash into each other? So now I'm so confused, like, how is he even shooting this from? He's gotta be in uh, one of the balloons, right? He doesn't say that. <laughs> so he says, if I'm not mistaken, this was shot on a Fujifilm X-T1 or X-T2. No idea which lens I was using back then, but most likely the Fujinon 16 to 55 to 8. Well, thank goodness he wasn't shooting this with a drone because I could imagine that would be the absolute worst place to put a drone. Could you imagine the props cutting into different oh, balloons? Gosh, yeah, it gives me anxiety. You start going up. down because some dumb <laughs> drone operator had a Mavic up in the air. I would hope a Mavic <laughs> couldn't take one of these down, but who the heck knows? I mean, it's just fabric, right? You used to go to recess and you'd play in it. I could imagine that little that little blade can chop up a good <laughs> number Maybe. of things. All right, you want to rate this? Yeah. Three, two, one. I'm you go three. Man, I'm going Same harsh as today. So I, I, I feel like this is a more um, professional, commercial-looking image than the last one yes, we saw. Yes, for sure. Um, so that's why I'm going to give this four, four, four out of five is an excellent on our rating system. I keep looking at this and thinking, how could you select the landscape separately from the balloons and maybe like pull that contrast or exposure down a little, just like a third of a stop maybe? Could you ever make it to where the balloons register a little faster and cleaner than this wall of information, you know? I really like the top balloons because they have that contrast. Mm. There's this like kind of blooming yellow on the top right. I definitely prefer, I think the yellow is on the left. Mm. Um, but I didn't notice that, but yeah. I think there's just some, I don't know, maybe like some weird asymmetrical vignette, something that just kind of helps my eye go somewhere because I just feel like I'm reading so much information, but. This seems like the type of image that would do really well as a large print. Sometimes when you see images like this with so much going on and we're looking at it kind of small on a small screen, like yeah. you said, it's kind of hard to see what's going on. If this was a giant poster print on the wall, I think you would easily be able to see all these details. Yeah. Do you think you would ever 
have been able to pull out even more and somehow get a foreground of the balloon you're in to make it look even crazier? Like there's where we are? Or do you think that would take away from? I would imagine it would make everything in the distance super small unless they were really close to you. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like these could be really close. I'm just wondering if the basket he's in is just out of the frame. Yeah. And you could pull back and, and show that. I wonder if somebody surely has taken a photo like that, but. Sometimes you do that and it's just a line of basket and it looks dumb and you're like, I have to shoot and crop that out. Next up. Have you ever done this? This is like the yeah. cast netting in Charleston? Yeah. Yeah, are you good at it? I think so. Everyone thinks so. <laughs> I mean, I, I, can, I can make it be a circle. And do you, like you, the goal is to pick up little minnows so that you can use them to fish yeah. or like shrimp or something. I don't know what yeah. you, I've never actually done this before. Really? I'm, yeah, I've never gone out with a cast net. And, you load it up and then throw it. And oh, gosh, I feel like I've missed out. I thought I we've been on the boat a million times with uh, our buddy Trip, and he always brought one, and he would do it, and we would all try. I've been around it, but like I have never actually done this. But these guys look like they're professionals. Yeah, and that's look how big that is. I mean, that yeah. thing looks. Yeah, I, I would struggle with these. These look really big. I mean. Are you going to guess where this is, or have you already read? I mean, I have not read. I would guess Cambodia. Or uh, the Philippines, Southeast Asia, or somewhere because yeah, yeah. of the boats. Let's see. It's in Amarapura, Mandalay. I don't know what that is. This was taken by Gil Kreslovsky, and he says the biggest challenge was working with the backlight from the rising sun. On one hand, I wanted to preserve the details. On the other, I didn't want to overexpose the sun. I was fortunate to have a layer of morning haze that diffused the rising sun, lowering the contrast and allowing me to capture the image with a harmonious exposure. Obviously, the only thing that makes this image interesting is that he captured both of these nets open at the exact same moment. Like, unless he was working with these fishermen, which it doesn't sound like he was, that's pretty cool that he would, you know, he just happened to get them throwing nets at the exact same time. Yeah, it makes you wonder if he like was communicating with them in some way, or was he sitting there and he's taken you know dozens of images and finally got the, this. But or did he just take a few images and then Photoshop the best of each side and put them together? That's what I would have done. That's as what the you lazy would have done. Photoshopper I am. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, this feels like a documentarian type of style, you know. So I would, I have faith in Gil. I think he has done this the right way. And uh, this just seems like a great editorial image that you would, you know, you, you ever read those articles that aren't just clickbait that are like, you know, the presidential candidates are making you mad and you gotta click it and read, but instead you read the article about Americans traveling in Southeast Asia, you know, and it's this kind of imagery and it's like peaceful and it's like that encouraging is you. Super specific. Um, no, I don't know, I don't like the I've travel section. No, okay. you just go for the ones that's like <laughs> Biden and Harris or whatever. I, just read, I, I get all my news on Reddit, so I don't go to any of these okay, websites. Okay, well, this seems like an image that would be a feature or second or third image down. And uh, it kind of captures the story. We just had a, I don't know if you saw this, we just had an article on F-stoppers and I wish I could give you guys more detail. Maybe I can find it and put it in this video. But it was a, uh, a journalist going back and looking at all the images that he shot on assignment somewhere in Southeast Asia. And it was a really interesting video because he's like, I'm gonna revisit some images that I took for, it might've been like time or something. And he was saying that the story had been written and he had the, the copy and then they had paid him to go shoot this. Maybe he was already living in the area. So it wasn't like he's flying across the world, but then he would read the article and then he would try to come up with images around where it was written to fit the story and to tell the story in a really unique way. And he had like five days to do it. And I think too, they weren't really letting people into this country. Like you couldn't just go do tourism and stuff. So he was kind of having to like sneak around and take pictures of these monks and all of this. It was just a really interesting video to like listen how this stuff actually happens because this is a world of photography I don't know at all. I've never been hired to go shoot a project. Um, I've never had to shoot images for a copy that already exists. Like that's kind of an interesting idea. You wonder why they didn't just have them at the same time doing the story, you know? Yeah. But um, anyway, I could see how this would tie into that. I wonder if that's what Gil does, what kind of photographer he is. 
or if he's just traveling on his own taking images like this, but. Do you have an opinion on the white balance of this image? I love all of it. It's like warm, but then the edges are blue, but then it feels like desaturated. Mm -hmm. It sits in a really nice place, I think. And then I love that you do have this highlight of the sun that's coming through this haze. Mm -hmm. I think the tones and the white balance and the color and everything, I love it. Is there something in here that bothers you? I don't know. There's aspects of it I really like as well. I just, I keep wondering, would I prefer it if it was just a little more blue? Would it feel a little like cleaner and fresher if it was blue? Or would that completely ruin the vibe? And the vibe is this like hot environment. And so we want it to have that, you know, yellow But I can tone. see somebody even pushing this warmer. I know, I know. There was some, if you haven't looked yet, go to the critique page because there's some incredible images that didn't make this critique. And one of them is this line of elephants backlit by the sun sitting right behind This them. is an image that was it's, in this critique, but you did not it, choose. I, it didn't get picked, right? Okay. But it's one of those where it's just super orange and the color, you know, it's probably beyond where you're saying this could go, but mm -hmm. you could pull this even warmer. Sure. So um, I, I kind of like that this is subdued and this is white and it's hints of blues and hint, hints of warmth, but not really going overboard either way. All right, you ready to rate yep. this? Three, two, one. I'm, I'm going go four, four again. Yeah, I'm, I'm going like, four in a row. You like these. Nice yeah. guy, Lee. Well, yeah, I feel like so far, all the images have been really good. Sometimes they're not so good. That's because I picked them. Oh, okay. And we had some great travel photos. This critique had more images that I felt like could fit into this critique than anything we've done in a while. So people are obviously taking great travel photos. I think now's a good time. Let's talk about the next critique, which starts right now. Yep. The genre for the next critique is smartphone photography. So it can literally be of any subject you want. We just want it to be shot on some sort of smartphone. You can edit it in any way you want as well. And we've been doing different types of prizes for the last uh, you know year we've been doing these contests. But for September, Instead of doing first, second, and third place, we're gonna give every single photographer that we feature a free tutorial from the F-Stopper store. You can check out all our tutorials at fstoppers.com slash store. We have tutorials on architectural photography, wedding photography, portrait photography. Macro, um, products, swimwear, headshots. I mean, literally any genre you could probably think of, there's something for you. Yeah, so if you are thinking about, you know, getting to become a more serious amateur photographer or you want to take that leap and go pro, these tutorials are for you. And we are also doing a giant discount on one of the tutorials. Tell them about that. Yeah, so we're going to mark down Pi Jerza's tutorial on Lightroom. I believe it's called Mastering Adobe Lightroom. If you're like me, you might think like, oh, I've been using Lightroom for years, but Pi is really good about revisiting software and learning everything there is to know about it. Yeah. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but Lightroom about a year or two ago started offering all these crazy AI masks yeah. that allow you to do things that you used to have to do in Photoshop. And now you literally can make these complex masks and then sync them across a whole series of images and it will put different masks doing the same task on all of your images. So for example, the biggest one and the easiest one is you can separate your subject from the background yep. and then do independent edits on the foreground and the background. Pi goes through all of this in the tutorial, but then he also teaches you how to use a smartphone and what's it, it's, it's just called Lightroom now, Lightroom Mobile, what's yeah. the- Lightroom one? Classic is the version we're used to that is more on your desktop, but then Lightroom is kind of like the universal app where you can sync everything together. So I believe, Pi does four or five photo shoots in downtown Charleston and shows you how to do cool landscapes. We get a model, he does some stuff with her. And then he takes each image into Lightroom on his phone and shows you how to get professional looking images. If you're the type of photographer who wants to upload to Instagram immediately, or you just don't wanna to have to you know, mess with your images on a computer, there's some really cool techniques that he does that I haven't even done in my entire career. Let's take a look at the before versus the after because this is, just bonkers. I mean, you look at these two images, it's impossible. I mean, someone looks at this and goes, there's no way that that wasn't flashed and it wasn't Photoshopped. If you're watching this and you're interested in photography, but you know, you don't know how to use complicated and expensive software, this tutorial is for you. But if you're a professional photographer like we are, and maybe you're a Photoshop guy and you've always thought like, oh, Lightroom's for culling, but Photoshop's for real editing, Check this tutorial out. It's gonna blow your mind. The stuff that Pi does in Lightroom 
is better in many cases than what I'm capable of doing in Photoshop and he can do it in seconds. We normally sell this tutorial for just 200 bucks. We're dropping it to 50 bucks, 49 bucks right now. So for check the month it out. Of September, yeah. yeah so. In the link below, um, this is the cheapest it's ever been sold for. Uh, I guarantee you, it's gonna blow your mind. Next up, I'm not gonna read this yet. I'm just trying to figure out what the heck is going on here. And then that kid in the very middle who's smiling, is he actually the middle? Does he have his hands out like everybody else? Is, is there another person in the middle who's, who's like yeah, unable so, to be seen? I, so this is the guy's head kneeling down and that, oh. that face smiling yeah. is not associated with that yellow shirt. I see. But it looks kind of like it is. Yeah. All right, do you want me to read what this is? I mean, I could guess, but you could guess a thousand things. I'm gonna say this is some sports star who won something, but that seems crazy that they, they ran in and- Oh, and the fact, like, everybody's arm is so perfect. Yeah, there's gotta be, it's gotta be coordinated. It seems like it's gotta be coordinated. This was taken by Sankit Kuntali. Indie Fest is one of my favorite images that I shot back in 2011 during the Shing Krishna Janmash me festival, which is also known as Dahi Handi. It's a joyful celebration of Lord Krishna's effort of stealing butter from Matka that is suspended in the air. So basically guys, I just read through this. He does not do a very good job of explaining what's going on here, but this seems like some sort of festival. And this is like a planned part of the festival that has to do with something going on in India known as Dahi Handi. How is this taking? Because 2011, is that what it said? That's yeah. before drones. Yeah. But it's so top down, like it's perfect. You know? It does, yeah, it does feel like, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like it was taken on a balcony. It feels like you're leaning out over these people more than a balcony would allow you to. And what's really interesting is you can tell from the story and looking at the image that this is a real event, but this looks like what AI creates, right? These crazy, all these hands and everything. <laughs> Maybe like, they could never, AI could never get this could, many hands right. It couldn't right. do that, but it's it's in that vibe where you <laughs> look at this and you just think like, if I saw this on my social media feed now, I wonder if I would just be like, I'm not even gonna look at okay. it because it's not real, but um, what a cool image. Guys, please, for future contests, it, Images like this, I, I am interested to know like what's going on in the picture, but also how did you take it? Um, you know, did did you book a room where you knew this was gonna take place? Were you communicating with the crowd and you told them to do it now? Or were you hired by some tour agency and they said stand here? Um, I feel like that's the most important stuff and we're not getting it. Are you ready to rate it? I am. Three, two, one. This, I mean. Oh, you're going three. I was thinking I'm between a four and a five. I feel like this image is just, I mean, it, for the right portfolio, this isn't gonna go in like a commercial portfolio or something, but this is so cool. Maybe it is a four, maybe it is a four. I guess my struggle with it, kind of similar to the first image of the whale, is that it doesn't really feel like a commercially viable image. It almost feels like a, like a National Geographic type image. Like here's what happened at this festival in India. Here's an image of it. Yeah. And so for me, it just isn't quite as, uh, what's, what's the word I'm trying to say? Like universally well, useful or like something? The, it just doesn't feel like the photographer. A lot of times with commercial images, you get an idea of like what this photographer does, what they're capable of, what their mind is thinking, what type of work they put in to create these photos. They're not taking a photo, they're creating a photo. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. They put a lot of effort in where this feels like you're in the right place, right time, snap the shot. Yeah. But I feel like that's the opposite side of the commercial world. Like there's a lot of photographers that can, I mean, that's wedding photography. Sure. There are people that take horrible wedding photos and there's people who are professionals at timing everything and their hands kind of out of it. But again, with wedding photos, like sometimes you can take a picture of like an incredibly beautiful couple and an incredibly beautiful background that would just be like this mind blowing image that could be used for anything. Or you could take an image of something really weird happening at the wedding. Yeah. And it's not true. that good of an image. It's just like, whoa, look at what. Yeah. was going on there. Yeah. And I kind of feel like that. I'm not saying this image is bad in any way. It's just... It sure sounds like it. <laughs> Let's move on. Man, that would be annoying. To have to pose 
or to have all that stuff. Just to, to have, have every uh, tourist uh, be uh, like, your no, no, can no, I take no, your no. photo? And you're no, like, no, no. Why me? Just to why do you walk always around pick me? like that every day? Like, how do you eat? And then, like, how do you move your head when there's freaking tusks on your ears? Uh, but if you know no other way, then maybe it's not annoying. That's true. Every time I see images like this, and most of them are not done to this level, but it always takes me back when I first got into photography and Joey L., that childhood. Yeah, I thought this was his shot. Protege, who you yes. know, was just like coming up with amazing stories like this. Nobody was photographing that at the time, at least with the lighting and the, the way that he did it. Well, this was taken by, is that Enoch Castleberry? This is a woman from the Mercy tribe in Ethiopia. While traveling between villages, a group of people were sitting by the road and we stopped to get some photos. She was the most photogenic. I tried to place her with the mountainous terrain in the background to give some context to her place in the world. For editing, I just did some basic adjustments to her, then selected the background and darkened it to get her to pop. I don't know if I should go here. Go, Patrick. You know how like in, can I say civilized areas or, or modern modern cultures? Dare you. If you were driving into a city and then you saw somebody on the side of the road and they had all the stuff to get your attention like this, mm -hmm. you would be like, this person is an outcast from society, right? Like they have the crazy tattoos and the bones and the eyes or, you know, whatever. Like, sure. I, you know, you'd be like the spikes that come out of their, their skin. Yeah. You'd be like, all right, this person's unemployable and like whatever, right? <laughs> they work at a vape shop. I mean, I'm saying they're on the side of the road or something, like okay. they, like the story he just presented. But when you go to a culture like this, is this person also kind of an outcast or are they looked at as one of the leaders of the community with mm -hmm. all of this stuff, you know? it's You could look at it even simpler in nature, you know, like the butterflies that have all the crazy colors, they're the ones that attract the mates because they have all this extravagant stuff. But you go to New York City and everyone's in all black, no color, like the most simple outfit ever. It's like they're doing the opposite of trying to grab your attention. And so, I don't know, I'm just looking at this image and wondering, is this person really important in this culture? Or is this person like, yeah, we don't associate with that anymore and we've kicked them out and this or, is all they have. Or is this person, like maybe this is traditional attire, but I could also see if you lived in an area where tourists were coming through, mm. you dress like this and then you get the dollar for the photo. You oh, know what I, mean? I see. Like yeah, I yeah. was just in Vegas a couple of weeks ago and we were walking down the strip and it's like the showgirls with the feathers. Yeah. Like, hey, want a photo? Want a photo? Want a photo? And like, yes, there are women in Vegas who dress like that. Right. But they dress like that on stage at this one venue at night only. This is not the Circus Soleil performer who got off no, the stage and now no. wants to pose with you. It's like a it's a, a little trick that they pull. Exactly. So I'm not suggesting this is a fraud tribeswoman, but I always uh, see it the would monks. be interesting. Everywhere you go, the monks they want to give you. something. Yeah, when we were in uh, Hong Kong, the monks kept trying to give I, us the prayer beads. Everywhere, New York. I'm sure <laughs> Vegas. There's <laughs> yeah. a monk. There's a monk everywhere. Yeah, they're they're all con artists. All right, next up. Well, we didn't even rate this image. Oh, so, my gosh. Yeah, Let's we go. gotta go. Three, two, one. Three stars. Solid image. Yeah, um, super interesting. I see a potentially little bit of, like, blooming around the subject. I almost feel like... On when, which side? Like, like, on all sides. Like, on the right side near that tusk right there. On the left side, under the ear, in between the ear and the tusk. Uh, I just feel like there's this hazy white stuff that kind of feels like... Maybe this was... It's definitely right there. That exposure in that little area is a little bit different, but... Maybe the, the subject selection was done manually before Lightroom and Photoshop could do it perfectly, automatically. I like with all this going on, that's where your eye goes. Yeah. That's to the color. <laughs> I, I love that the scene's there, you know? Like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that background's pretty cool. So. Yeah, it looks great. So this image has popped up in front of me multiple times this last month. I don't know if it's been a featured image on F-Stoppers or it's just I've glanced at this community, uh, this contest in the last 30 days, but this one really caught my eye. I felt like it was a really unique landscape shot. So I haven't read anything yet. If I stumbled upon this online, I would be 95% sure this is not real. Uh-oh. This feels very AI to me. But is this real? Are you telling me I'm this hoping is real? it is. I mean, if we now have to like try to figure out what is AI and what's not, like, I mean, that's what we do have to do now. But I didn't.
go down that road of trying to confirm all of these, but um, this was taken by Marcin Zajac. What's up with all the photographers having the craziest names? Is that crazy? all the best? Yeah, I, like what is that? I don't know how to pronounce any of these names. Anyway, a strange spire juts out of a barren landscape of the Utah Badlands, bathing in the golden light of the setting sun. This looks like something straight out of Dune or like some movie set. Yeah, its otherworldly appearance is more reminiscent of a Star Wars film than anything you would expect to see on Earth. How would okay, we not here see... we go, here uh, we uh, go, uh, here we go, here we go, here we go. It's a composite? It's a blend of two exposures. One taken before sunset when the sun was still above the horizon, lighting up the spire and the surrounding landscape. The other is right after the sun dipped below the horizon, lighting up the clouds that makes sense to me. Okay, but that's a double exposure to give you the, it's like what Alaya does when he tries to get sure. the city lights on, sure. get the blue It just out. doesn't feel real. I thought you were about to say the spire <laughs> has been cut out and placed. No. You know, Monument Valley. It yeah. looks like Monument Valley, but they've taken this other location and they put that in there. Yeah. But it's kind of wild to think that I've never seen this composition somewhere else. You know? I know. I know, that's a really cool looking spire. You know, like out here in Utah and Arizona, they always have those stories where there's like the, uh, is it called a monolith? Where they'll just find this mirror shaped statue that looks like uh, the Washington Monument. You know, like it's just a pyramid type thing. You haven't yeah. seen this? I don't know, what do you mean? Like, like it, the hikers will just walk out somewhere and they'll, all of a sudden there'll be this like mirror shaped, look up. I think I've seen, I think I know what you're talking about. And they're like, it's it's so permanent that it's not like somebody just put it there and you could pull it down. Sure. Like it's cemented in and it's always, it's designed like the, uh, the cyber truck or something where it's just this perfect thing. And yeah. you're like, how did this get out here? Who put it here? No one makes claims of it. Well, have you heard of the thing? I think it was in Georgia. Yeah. It was like, it had like the rules of rebuilding society after the apocalypse or something crazy like that. Yeah. And nobody was... could figure out who did that. Yeah, did it have something like, there was something satanic with it or people were trying to say it was the church of, it was something that was super controversial, but it had been there for a long time. I think it got blown up or something. Somebody during the pandemic, I think, went and destroyed it. Now we're never going to rebuild society. All right, let's let's rate this oh, one. Oh, forgot about it. Yeah, you keep forgetting. Three, right. two, one. Three? I don't know. I love Maybe this it's shot. a four. It's just. It's wild. I don't know you can put so this on your wall. It's just so fakey looking to me that that's my problem. I want some guy base jumping off the top. <laughs> yeah, be, let's make that, it more fake. That, I don't know. Maybe this is a four. It's cool. It's cool. Sorry, he can't have a name like Lee Morris. Something <laughs> super unique and hard to say. Yeah. Oh boy, if we have a guy who's made the critique twice with two very different images. I messed oh, up. Wow. I did not mean to All pick. Right, this was also taken by Gil. This looks like the first time you tried to inhale some tobacco. <laughs> Why don't you take a real inhale? <laughs> no, this person looks a lot more pro than me. This image is incredible. Like that dude in the background with the beard, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. It's like, I mean, this this is like Every so person perfect in here it's is, AI, yeah. yeah. Every person in here is like a character that fits this story so well. This photograph shows a group of acidics in an intimate and focused moment of sharing a smoke. I intentionally used a long 135 millimeter lens to highlight the deep sense of connection. The image is slightly underexposed to emphasize the fire and the smoke along with the details on the face of the person smoking. Shot with a 135 F2. Don't. But it was shot at F3.2. Oh look, there's another guy up here in the top left corner. With I, the know, same beard. I know, I know. I might think this is also AI. This look, this has that like dreamy look to it. And as AI gets better and better and better, it's just, we're screwed, man. There's no way we're gonna be able to determine what's Have real you ever not. been in a position where you're visiting another culture and you have a <clears throat> lens and a professional camera with you and you are just sniping off photos, trying to get something interesting? Have you ever been to where like, you're like Gil, he's a white guy, right? Mm -hmm. Like. He's the photojournalist in this tribe or village or whatever, mm -hmm. and they know of, they see him, they're aware of him. They know he's taking pictures. Maybe they don't totally even understand what pictures are. I don't, I don't really know, but have you been in a position where, I, I've done a few mission trips where we go to help like build wells or something. And like, I take the camera and I'm the typical guy who's gonna take, you know, 
And it's a weird, it's like a weird thing. Cause you always feel like, am I exploiting these people right. or am I telling their story? Mm -hmm. And then I'm always trying to like light them in a unique way like Joey L would do. And it's like, are they cool with this? Or it's exciting cause no one's ever done that. Or it's a novelty. You're doing this all the time. Give me the dollar, you know? Have you been in a situation where you've taken photos of people so wildly different than you and it kind of felt like there was that difference between you, like you could feel it? Now that you mention that, I don't know that I have. I mean, you know, we've been to Cambodia and so we filmed a lot of stuff, but we weren't in people's faces like this. Yeah. I mean, wedding photography is very similar, but it's always, you know, they're your same class, your same country, it's a culture, you know. It's they're paying you to be there. And everything's, but I mean, a lot of the people are just the guests, you know. Sure. So you're like pointing a camera at somebody you don't know at all, sure. but they understand the whole name of wedding photography. But anytime you're doing this photojournalistic stuff, it's there's definitely like this vibe that I have felt only a few times. Maybe, maybe Gil just gets over it and you become good friends with them and, you know, that's, what you should do, but um, let's rate this thing. I don't really know how Three, to. Three, two, one. It's a pretty moving image. I almost, I, I'm, I'm in between a four and a five on this. Like there's an aspect of this that I'm like, this is world-class. This is so wild and moody. It's just so perfectly imperfect. How do you think this is lit? Do you think this is the end of the day and it's just natural light and it's That's going what through it trees feels like or something? To me. It's, I don't know. <laughs> it's so wild though. Yeah. I just keep staring at it and everybody's faces and stuff. <laughs> and that guy with the beard in the back. He's just waiting for his turn. Maybe. He's, like, he's waiting to cast a spell on me and <laughs> send me to hell. I don't know. All right. So I'm going to guess we have moved to a Norwegian country. This feels like Iceland or wherever we just were, Sweden or Denmark. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Feel like that's this it architecture feels like that only because our friend mike kelly shoots this stuff all the time and i just have learned where these images are based on his portfolio but the funny thing is i'm trying to figure out what these are it almost looks like they're storage units or something well like you pull a boat in or something. how can you get a boat in that when there's a lip yeah i don't i mean are these just that close to water in general I don't know. This has to be a storage unit, right? Like, or these are really cheap apartments that are just beautifully designed. Like you have this I tiny little- I assumed that these were just like boat storage places and the houses were across the street. And this is how people could take their boat in okay. there. But let me read. So this was taken by Michael Batari. And he says that he was on vacation in Holland. And he okay. saw this. And then he just goes through what it took to get this shot. He used a neutral density filter to get a 30 second exposure. And he, he put the shot together like that. But he doesn't explain what exactly these buildings are, which uh, is literally the opposite of what I asked for earlier. We wanna know how you shot it. We don't really care about those situations. But in this case, I wanna know what these buildings are. But are you ready to rate Does it? The, the long exposure is definitely prevalent in the bottom half of the frame, but it almost looks like the top half is not um, a long exposure. I mean, everything looks pretty sharp, and I mean, I can even see little water spots and dust spots in the, I mean, there's some real strong dust spots there. You need to clean your sensor, but um, I wonder if this is two different exposures, one for the clouds, it's faster, and then one for the bottom. That's I believe it is. All right, you ready to rate this? Um, yeah. Three, two, one. Going four stars. Yeah, I went three. I like it. I am one to always crop two to three ratio or four to five ratio, just because yeah. that's the standard crop you do with medium format or for 35 millimeter. But I've noticed that like, I've had conversations where Mike Kelly, he will do squares, he'll do whatever. This definitely feels like it should be a 16 by nine. Like all of this foreground in the water, it's maybe it, it it serves a purpose to put these buildings really far away so it doesn't just look like a creek or a stream or something. But in my mind, I feel like if I could just blacken out the top and bottom a little bit, the crop would be stronger as a really panoramic shot. But I don't know. I get that. Thoughts? I'd also like to see this with a longer exposure in the sky. I feel like I love... Something I always struggle with, I would assume most photographers do when you're shooting water is like getting that perfect movement in the water. Sometimes you want the perfect reflection, but then other times you want something like this. 
I really like this. I feel like it's perfect. But when I compare the, the blurriness and the movement of the water to the clouds, I think I want a little bit of that blurry, wispy cloud action up top as well. What do you, what do you think if I just crop in ever so slightly? And it and looks like the houses go forever? They go forever now. I don't, I don't think I like that. No, you like to see that they're kind of like on an island or I think they start so. and stop? I think so. Maybe somebody in the comments on YouTube can tell us where this location is and what is going on behind those white doors. All right. So what's funny about this image is this was somehow more contrasty on my computer screen and I enjoyed it. But here on this, it looks a little washed out, mm -hmm. low res, and it doesn't have the same impact that I felt like it had when I picked it. Mm. Um, but I'll tell you why I picked this. Okay. And I think you have been to this location. I have. I like that this location in France or wherever this is, you can tell us more about it, but this was in the submissions by multiple people in so many different ways. And they were all ways that I've seen before, but this, I was like, wow, the, uh, the water and the wispiness and the colors, and then this little thing way out in the middle, like it just presented it in a way that I have never seen it before. And it almost made it with a little more contrast. It, it, it kind of felt like it was more about the colors and the movement. And I just felt like it was kind of a fresh look on a location that I've seen a ton of, but I've actually never been there. And I don't even know really what, what's the story behind here? Well, I'll just tell you my story. I don't know. I don't remember the details of the, when this was built and by whom. I went to a wedding in France and I think it was the day after the wedding I think the bride was like, hey, some of us are gonna, we're gonna walk across the beach to a castle. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll go. And Not I, knowing that it was- No, dude, I- And then what is the hike like? This looks like it's a long hike to get out there, but is that an illusion? I just remember get, getting out there to the beach and you have to time it at low tide. You walk out, into the ocean and it's, it'll just be like wet sand. And we just start walking to this thing and I see it in the distance and I'm like, I've seen photos of this place before. I thought it was fake. I thought this was <laughs> some like Game of Thrones shit or something. I did not think this was a real yeah. place. Every time I had seen photos of this before, I had just written it off as like, oh, come on. Like, it's just like a painting or something. Like yeah. nowhere on earth can you actually build that. Yeah. And then here I am walking across the ocean at low tide, barefoot, towards this thing. It was one of the craziest experiences of my entire life. It's called uh, Mont Saint Michel in France. And then when you get there, is it a working city? Is yes. it totally just a tourist trap? Is it cool? Like, what do you do and see there? Is it amazing or was it kind of the walk and the visual that was so great? I thought the city was amazing too. We 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 walked there's a like in this image you can see off to the left there's a bridge that leads to it. So yeah. I don't remember how we actually got up there, but I think we walked on the bridge. At least we left from the bridge. But you you walk in this like spiral city that goes up and they have like restaurants and shops and stuff. I think it's 100% touristy now. Yeah. And 100%. But they, they, I mean, there are people that live there, but I, I think all the money comes from sure. tourists buying ice cream and stuff. But I just was blown away. They have and, the best ice cream all the <laughs> way out there in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. So I know I sound really foolish right now because probably every single person watching this is like, what? How have you not heard of Mont Saint Michel? I just always thought this was fake. <laughs> and is this like a uh, low country in Charleston where it's just such a shallow area that when the tide comes, it, it's enough you can't get out there, but it's it's not like this is in the ocean, right? Like it's just probably a very shallow tide. I don't know. I don't I don't remember those details. And then there's probably a time where like, you guys have to leave or do they have boats? We, no, no, we, we, we left over the bridge and then we got picked up by a car at the end of the bridge. Oh, okay. But we, so right before we get there, the tide starts coming in, you know, it's like a little inch of water or whatever. And the guy's like, all right, everybody, who wants to sink in the quicksand or whatever? And so somebody from our group was like, I'll do it. So they stand in the middle of our circle and he's like, all right, everybody start jumping. And we start jumping. And this dude just starts sinking, yeah, like up to his waist. Yeah, I, and you know I've seen all the stuff online about how quicksand isn't real or whatever. But no, it's like, it's like super dangerous. I yeah, mean, so how we, do you pull them out? Yeah, just like all of them are just like lifting them up out of there. It was wild. 
You know where we went uh, in Alaska? We went to Alaska, the mountain, you know, the ski slope and all that. That bay right there um, is known for these tides that come in. And when I lived up there, there was a a newlywed couple. They took a four-wheeler out just like this, and he, like, got stuck. Mm. Tide starts coming in, and Mm. then he gets out to try to move the four-wheeler. He gets stuck, and Mm. they... The Gosh. story is a helicopter comes to pull him out. And oh, don't even, <laughs> don't she, even tell me, don't even tell she, me. I believe it was the guy who died. Uh, she lost oh her husband that day. But um, Yeah, so they're like, do not go out in these shallow areas because the tide comes in so fast because it's, you know, it's so, it's like a tidal wave, you know, or a tsunami or something. Unless you're at Mount St. Michelle, then pay for the walking tour. It's <laughs> totally the quick safe. Sand. Yeah. All right, let's rate this one. So this is a drone shot, right? Or yeah. is there a mountain? There's no way that... Uh, this is a drone shot. Oh, and I'll just tell you this was taken by Martin, spelled super weird, Martin H. But it was just taken on a DJI 3, Mini 3 Pro. Okay. Three, two, one... Ooh, I'm between a two and a three. Yeah, I'm between a three and a four. Yeah. Uh, I, I really loved this when I first saw it. I just feel like maybe it can't be a two, but... No. I feel like the, maybe it looks better on your screen, but like it just had more contrast and like punchiness and um, this looks a little washed out here. It's almost like not even sharp. I don't know if it's just so low res, but somehow, on, could, could it be that the iPad screen is higher res than my monitor screen? Is that possible? Uh, or certainly. it's more dense because it's- I mean, if you have a 1080 monitor, then it's, it's 4K, definitely- It's 4K, but it's, I don't know. All right, last image. All right, who took this one, Patrick? This is, uh, how do you say, is it Jin? I don't know. <laughs> Jin Kostik? Yevhen. Yevhen Kostik? Yeah, for sure. I think I've looked at this earlier, because somebody I believe was like, that sand looks Photoshopped. And I was like, I don't think it's sand. It looks like they're on a boardwalk or something. But then when you look at the top, it looks like maybe a boat, like a cruise ship, but... So this feels so similar to the image that won a critique months ago where they were looking down on two interesting shaped pools on a cruise ship. Okay. Do you remember that image? Sounds familiar. You think it's the same? I just wonder if it was the same same photographer by chance. What's wild, the more I look at this, the more it makes sense. But when you first look at it, it looks like... Like bad CGI <laughs> video games or something. Like, what is going on these stairs? And now that I see it, I'm like, oh, I guess stairs would look like that from this perspective. <laughs> but well, it's also the fact that the sun is coming from almost where the drone is. So there's very short shadows, and it's it just makes everything look like it was cut and pasted in Photoshop. But it's it's kind of like if you took a photo with the on camera flash pointed straight, right? But when the sun is in that position from this angle is always the worst time of day to take a photo normally, right? You would never want the camera facing the people because the shadow is like coming straight down and the light's straight down. So he doesn't really explain how or when this was taken. He does say that it was taken with a DJI Mini 3 Pro. So maybe, I, I would imagine the boat is docked. And then my other question is, are you on that boat? Or mm-hmm. did you drive to the port and you put the drone up and you're photographing docked cruise ships? We were just on a cruise ship. Would they let you bring a drone on the boat? I would imagine that would have been confiscated, right? Or did people have drones and they were flying them around? I would think they would let you bring a drone. They would, maybe I could see them saying no flying on our ship, but. And then what happens when we were coasting? Like, could you fly a drone then? <laughs> that, that's a f- how fast easy is, way to lose a drone, or, man. I mean, you could just take it up and then immediately bring it down. I mean. I've tried landing drones on boats and it's been a disaster 100% of the time. <laughs> All right, you ready to Do rate you, this? Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm rating. Three, but. two, one, I'll go three stars. Oh, four, interesting. I, I don't think I love, like, I'm gonna go back to my default. If this is a series of images like this and the next one has a completely different color palette, I'm gonna be like, man, this is like a cool art series. This image on its own is cool, but like, I don't know that I want to stare at this on my wall forever because the yellow tone, like it's not a color that I like to see. I agree around. with that. It's kind of a ugly feeling image, but. But the idea of this, <clears throat> if you came up with this, I'm going to shoot this type of architecture. Maybe it's all cruise ships or maybe it's just different scenes, 
but I'm going to shoot at this time of day and go for this layout. I think you do that over and over again and have a portfolio of 10 to 20 images. I think it's like a really cool idea that's going to separate you from other photographers. I just, I think this, I'm giving this image a four, but it's not one where I want to sit here and look at this forever. But I agree. I don't, th I think it's kind of meant as, you know, it's, it's like sugar. You look at it and you're like, ah, I get the high from it and then move on, you know, but it does stop you if you were scrolling. It's like sugar. It's like a sugar high or something. It's you it's look at the sugar novelty. I don't know. I'm trying to use. Okay. No, uh, like it, it kind of feels like a Wes Anderson movie scene type thing. Yeah, it's not. It's not beautiful, but it's certainly interesting. All right, guys, it is time to give away the prizes. Third place we have agreed is the image by Samuel Resendez, the uh, whale shot, the very first image of this critique. Incredible image with the boat in the background. Well done. You get a free tutorial from the F-Stoppers store. Check it out at fstoppers.com slash store. Send me a private message on F-Stoppers. Let me know which one you want. I'll get that right over to you. Second place is gonna be the landscape shot. You were on the fence, but I think I've persuaded you that this is... I don't know that you've persuaded me. I just let you choose second place. Okay, well, <laughs> I, I love this image. I think this is super cool and I... I love a landscape shot that's not so over the top, but maybe you would say this is over the top. I feel like this, it's just cool to see stuff on our planet that looks like it's not from our planet. Because of Photoshop. I think that's just the lighting. I mean, the lighting hit the walls. I mean, are we now diminishing this too much? <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's a cool shot. It's I think cool the, shot. the second shot was to get the sky the way that they wanted, but um, I don't know. I think this is just a cool composition. It, it is a very cool I, shot. I really like this image. So second place, you get the color checker. And uh, for first place, we got to give it to Gil, man. This smoking shot here is unbelievable. Gil, you win the Tamron 28 to 75 2.8 lens. Uh, once again, both of you guys send me a private message on F Stoppers. Uh, let me know your address and your phone number. Um, for some reason, they always ask for the phone number when we're mailing this stuff out, and we'll get it right over to you. But congrats, guys. These are awesome. If you would like to be a part of the next critique, remember, we're just going to be giving away 10, at least 10. Maybe we'll do even more people. We're going to give away one free tutorial from fstoppers.com slash store to every single person we choose to be in the next critique. It's going to be a phone or smartphone photography, and you can upload your images right now to fstoppers.com slash contests. Got anything else to say? No, I think uh, I enjoyed this critique and hopefully the next one is just as good. See you next time.